And welcome to the five things we learned from Liverpool versus Newcastle at St. James's Park this weekend, the early game. Number one, Jordan Henderson loves some needle. So we all know Jordan Henderson's um, evolution as a Liverpool player from a guy who was bought as a right winger from Newcastle's arch enemy Sunderland as a, um, as a youngster, really, um, all the way to almost being sold, almost being swapped for Clint Dempsey in a deal with Fulham, um, having a great season and getting suspended right near the end in 2013-2014, inheriting the armband of Steven Gerrard, becoming the, the permanent captain during the club era, um, and then quite a few shuffles over the last couple of years as he's lifted some trophies. So um, Jordan Henderson will go down as a as Liverpool legendary captain at this point. Um, but what Saturday show does is just how much he loves um, the booze and the, that side of the Premier League. And we know um, Jordan is, is the captain of captains. He's someone who gets people together. He's a communicator. Um, but in this situation, um, he wanted to be the villain. Um, and I think take some of the, the pressure off the other the other players on his team. So captain's performance on the pitch, but captain's performance psychologically as well. Um, I think my one of my favourite parts of the game was when he was being substituted. And usually like the home fans or a returning legend get the applause. Um, he seemed to be basking in the booze that he got. So um, yeah, I feel like Jordan is well, well tuned in with what the Geordies think of him. Obviously, as a Sunderland Mackham from down the road. But um, yeah, I thought that that was the first thing we learned that he really likes this part of the game. Number two, James Milner is a Premier League legend and will go down as somebody who um, will, you know, potentially be one of the best model professionals, but also just a really good player and, and someone to, to really aspire to be like. Um, you know, we were at the home of one of his former clubs and you know when I was with the Liverpool Toronto um, folks watching this game that conversation went round a couple of times it was like did James want to play for Newcastle did James want to play for Newcastle they they love him over there um, apparently Aston Villa like him too I'm not sure if Man City like him anymore but I remember when he was doing his thing there the reason I bring this point up is because um, this might have been James Milner's last game as a Liverpool player in the Premier League. I have no insight, obviously. I'm not an in the know. Um, but there was a moment when he was taken off that he um, looked to be putting his shirt over his face and almost hiding, crying. Um, not seeing any more fallout of that. But um, if he knows something that we don't, I just want to use this point to say what a servant he has been to the Premier League. For all his teams, Leeds, Newcastle, Aston Villa, Manchester City and Liverpool. Um, probably not enough England caps. Um, definitely a Liverpool legend at this point. And if he is about to depart, we will miss him. Um, but in the meantime, what a performance he had um, as, as a starter for Liverpool. Point number three. Liverpool are on autopilot right now. Um, they just seem to be winning games and churning out results. Now, look. This game on Saturday was not a 1-0 by any stretch of the imagination, which probably um, had Manchester City fans um, hoping for a late slip towards the end. Um, pro probably a bunch of other fan bases as well, let's be honest. Um, but it's just so interesting how Jurgen Klopp has created a machine that just seems to run on autopilot. You know, we'll just swap in. Trent Alexander-Arnold, possibly the best right back in the world with um, somebody who's not even a natural right back. Don't skip a beat. You know, we, we rotated the midfield. Our two main midfielders in form stepped out. Thiago and Fabinho didn't miss a beat. Um, the star player up front wasn't part of the starting eleven. We won the game. Mo Salah did change the game, by the way. When he came on, he added some fresh impetus. Um, but it's just been really interesting to see, you know, there was, a, there was the talk of the short turnaround between the Villarreal first leg and this game. 
and Liverpool just churned on. So great performance, but also the fact that they did it on autopilot. Point number four, um, it's about time, just because there are people in the fan base that for some reason seem to be divided. But um, I think it's undisputed for Liverpool fans at this point to say that Naby, Naby Keita has come to the party. And um, he's been exceptional for a few weeks now. Um, shout out Dan Fernandez from Liverpool, um, official Liverpool supporters club, our esteemed treasurer, massive Naby Keita fan. He's been saying it for a long time. Um, and I'm in on Naby Keita. Um, my, my argument over time has been he's not necessarily put the body of work in, but he has put the body of work in, in these last couple of weeks. And you know what's interesting about Naby is I actually see him as a fourth choice starting midfielder now. Like I think we've got four players that can start. If the Champions League was tomorrow, Champions League final was tomorrow, Fabinho, Thiago, Henderson was the original Champions League final midfield. And I now think that Naby Keita is in the conversation. I don't really think there's anything in the midfield he can't do. Um, he's not that all-action dribbler that we saw on YouTube before he joined us. Jürgen has developed his game. Naby's developed his game. But what we're seeing is a guy who's comfortable on the ball, a guy who can carry the ball, a guy who's good in the tackle. Um, and we are... Um, super lucky at this point to have someone like him either starting or coming off the bench. Um, Naby Keita, I salute you. And point number five, Liverpool and Man City are throwing form out of the window. Now, Man City have got a big game against Real Madrid, the newly crowned Spanish champion. So let's see um, if this point stands there. But I didn't realise how in form Newcastle were coming into this game. And it was a home game for Newcastle as well. And yet Liverpool just completely put them aside. And this isn't exclusive to Liverpool. Manchester City are doing the same thing as well. They see the challenge in front of them. They meet it. They beat it. They move on. But I think it's a really important point because um, we obviously need a favour. I don't know where that's coming from at this point. You know, um, every time I've done this video, I've said, as long as they've got that one point advantage, Manchester City remain favourites. You know, we were saying this with like seven, eight games to go. We're now down to four. Um, but Liverpool and Manchester City just completely um, pretend like nothing's even happening outside of their bubbles. You know, Liverpool play first, they win. Manchester City win and go back on top. Manchester City play first, open up a four-point gap. And then Liverpool just make it one point again. So um, anyway, um, they were my five points from what we learned yesterday. Um, loads more content coming as we close the season but then there's also going to be some fun stuff um, in the at the end of the season um, Forrest, I know I have to do some Liverpool transfer work um, and I will get on that soon um, but in the meantime please follow us, please share please subscribe, all the good stuff um, this has been Azaz follow the North End, I'm out bye this is the North End. This is the North End.